An otherwise quiet Houston morning suddenly changed by gunfire. In southwest Houston, shots fired near a shopping center. Here's what we know so far. Nine people injured, at least one still in critical condition. On today's Houston Life, we'll talk about what to do in an active shooter situation. And we'll share strategies to help keep you safe. We have CJ Kirk and Meredith Neal with Krav Maga Houston here with more. And guys, we do want to get into this about what to do in that active shooter situation. I know one of the things uh, throughout the morning that resonated with me was the guy who the shots were fired into his car and he was able to immediately hit the gas and just haul out of there. Right. It's that first instinct just to get out? Yeah, unless you're a first responder, the, the national standard for dealing with an active attack or, or an active shooter is run, hide, fight. And if your car, obviously, you need to drive away as quickly as you can. Run, hide, fight. That's right. Now, I imagine that in a situation like this, everyone's caught by surprise. We don't know what to do. Tell me a little bit about what happens to our bodies and our brains in a situation, you know, where, where panic ensues. Yeah, the, there's a human condition, and when you're under stress, um, you lose up to 50 IQ points, which is not good for most of us, unless you're a super genius. Um, you have what's called auditory exclusion, which means your ears shut down and your brain funnels activity through your eyes. You lose your fine motor skills. And which is scary. Yeah, it is scary. I mean, that, that's yeah. scary to start thinking that you're losing all of this stuff that's going on and all you want to do is get out and keep yourself safe. I think it's, I think it's shocking what you just said, that we lose 50, 50. IQ points. And yeah. so it's on almost average. like we're unable to function. So knowing that the body goes through this kind of stress, what should we be doing? You said run, run hide, hide, fight. fight. Those right. are the three steps. So let's right. talk first about run then. Clearly that's a sort of self-explanatory, yeah. right? Well, it is in the sense that you want to extract yourself from the situation as quickly as you can. The issue people run into is when you find yourself in this high-stress environment, if you haven't done mental rehearsal, if you haven't confronted the idea that this could happen to you, um, it may not be as easy as it sounds. You may run the wrong way. You may run in a circle. You may run in a confused fashion. So even running um, is something that we should think about, and it comes back to what we call situational awareness which means understanding where you are, understanding how to get out if you need to, and having a sense of what that would look like. In other words, mental rehearsal is probably the most important thing you can do so that you don't have what's called lag time. And lag time is your brain trying to catch up to the reality around you. And it can, it can be as short as a couple seconds. It could be as long as 45 seconds. So if you're in an active shooter situation and your brain's not accepting that this is happening, and you stand there for 45 seconds, it's a real problem. Well, 45, 45 seconds, seconds. Wow, to figure out what to do. Yeah. Now, later in the show, Meredith is going to demonstrate with you some of these situational procedures to help you. You said mental rehearsal? Mental rehearsal. Mental right. rehearsal to sort of run through, through the mind. But let's continue talking about this actor shoot it, shooter, active shooter situation. Sure. If we find ourselves uh, in a scenario where someone is opening fire right. or has like some other morning. sort of weapon. Right. Like, like this morning or back over Labor Day where we had the Memorial Drive shooting that was at a gas station. Right. What do you do if you find yourself in that parking lot or that intersection or that gas station in a wide open space? And right. let's start with a parking lot since okay. that's where the shooting happened this morning. So, we're getting into context, and despite context, what you want to do is, again, extract yourself as quickly as you can. If you can safely get to your car and speed away, that's fine. If you need to escape into the neighborhood through the trees, you need to do that. You need to, first, you need to be invisible, so you need to con conceal yourself, which means running away in a, in a fashion or in, in a context that allows you to use uh, the environment around you so that you don't become a target. Um, that's the run, the run piece of it. And what if it's not just you, though? What if it's you and your kids? Well, it's, it, it becomes multiplicitably harder, right? It yeah. becomes a, a, an issue where, again, if you had mental rehearsal, if you talked to your children about this, um, you're going to be much better off. We, my wife and I talk to our kids all the time about getting in and out of the car quickly um, so that we're aware of the surroundings because there's a, there's a moment in the car where your, your back is turned to the world around you and you're trying to ensure, in this case, that your kids are in the car and that they're getting buckled up. And in that moment, you're vulnerable. Uh, and the same thing coming out of the car. So if you're able to rehearse with your children, it would be uh, a far better result. If you, if you don't rehearse with your children, your children will most likely be uh, so shocked uh, that they simply freeze. Your three options under stress are fight, flight, and freeze. And when you're overcome with um, fear, oftentimes you freeze. So it becomes much, much harder. 
Wow. Okay, so the so after the run, then there's the hide step, right? right? Conceal yourself, make yourself invisible. Now, after that, the third step is fight. So, describe to us how this plays out. Well, in in hide, you're in a situation where you can't extract yourself. So you're going to have to find a place that only conceals you, but also provides cover. So the difference being concealed means you can't see me. Cover means you can't shoot through what's in front of me. Um, if you're in an office building, you need to lock the door, you need to turn the lights out, you need to turn your cell phones off, you need to barricade the door, you need to get behind as much uh, concealment and cover as you can and hope that the gunman passes you by. Um, when if, you say turn the phone off, though, that also means turn it off even if you leave it on vibrate, turn it off, right? Right. You don't want the phone vibrating or ringing when someone's walking by the area you're staged Because people can, that you could can give away your hiding place. Yeah. yeah, it'll give away your location, that's right. What about a scenario, I mean, this morning, I know you said situationally, everything, every scenario is different. Um, talk to us a little bit about a sniper situation, because we've also had, right here in Texas, yeah. UT, we had back in the 70s, the shooting at UT Austin. And more recent, we had the incident in Dallas yeah. in July. I mean, sadly, we have a long yeah. list of these mass shootings. So if there is a sniper scenario where you hear gunfire, but the shooter is concealed, how would you recommend we respond? Um, you need to extract yourself from the area, again, run, and run away so that you can no longer hear gunfire, right? Um, and then when you get to a place where you've extracted yourself, I would still, go, you could go someplace safe like a police station, or you can also go to some, a public place, but I would, I would most definitely conceal myself from any kind of fire, whether it's a sniper fire, what we're talking about is the capacity of a weapon, right? right. So a sniper has a long gun, it usually has a, a longer accuracy and capacity, uh, or capacity to reach, reach out. But in all these cases, what you're trying to do is get away from the sphere of influence that the active shooter uh, has set up. But what if you don't know where that where sphere of influence is? is? Like if you're outdoors and you know, gunshots are echoing off buildings around you and you have no idea which direction it's coming from, is the, is the first course of action always to run or, or should you find a hiding place close to where you are? Yeah, that's are? a good question. Um, that's, that's situational or contextual, but if it was me and I couldn't, fa I couldn't get a vector on where the fire was coming from, I would look for cover and concealment. I would hide somewhere and try to find something bulletproof to hide behind until all clear is called. What about in a place like a mall or an airport where you have so many nooks and crannies? Yeah. What do you do? And we just had that Washington mall shooting. Yeah. Washington yeah. State. The, the mall becomes a little more complex in the sense that you may be running and you may be running with lots of other people and the flow of, of people may dictate where you're able to go. Um, what, one thing you don't want to do is get caught in a, an ambush or, st I'm sorry, a stampede, right? Even if someone's ambushing you in the mall, if everyone runs the same direction, there are multiple uh, variables that have to be considered. The first one is, um, am I alone? Do I have children? And if so, you have to start weighing in that moment, um, is the mass of humanity coming at me more dangerous than um, an active shooter or an active attacker? And it goes back to mental rehearsal and situational awareness. Where are the nearest exits? Uh, when, I, when I exit the building, I'm, I'm scanning. Are there, is there a second attacker? Are they trying to drive everybody to an exit and then shoot them as they come out the door? So when you go into a building, say, I mean, you know, a stadium, to a theater, to a mall, to an airport, are you constantly looking for your ways out? Yes. Um, and there's a way to do it so that it's not exhausting, right? And we, what we call it is the checklist. You walk into a facility and you look around and you say, is there anything out of context here? Situational awareness is really understanding. Is there something that doesn't fit? After the break, we're actually going to demonstrate some of this mental rehearsal that you talked about. So I want you both to stay right there. Do not worry because CJ and Meredith from Krav Maga will be right back with more uh, self-defense strategies. We'll be right back.